everybody, how's it going? So this one has been due for way too long. Uh, today we're gonna take a look at my IGS S-Type bus compressor. This is a modern recreation of the classic SSL analog bus compressor that you have heard on a million records. Let's check this out right here. Um, I've, got, I've got a mix going on and I've got the rear insert happening. So I'm sending the signal out of the RME into the IGS bus compressor and then back in um, via the whole analog signal path. And then it goes right back into digital hits and L3. And then um, I've got a level meter as well, just to uh, check that out. Usually when I'm, I'm uh, doing a mix, I'll have the, the attack set at 30 milliseconds, the release at auto and a four to one ratio. That is just basically the the settings that are going to get you that modern rock and metal kind of mix sound. So let's uh, drop a threshold in. Generally, the magic number we're going for is four dBs of gain reduction, but this is a hardware unit. We can probably squeeze it just a little bit harder than you could on a plug-in. We'll go faster attack. That's just going to really damage the mix. Pull it back. Off. Wow. Now I see why I had my bottom mic up so much. There we go. Bring that back a tiny bit. Bring the threshold back a little bit. Yeah, the kick can come down a bit. Tars up just a tiny bit. That's a pretty rocking right there. Turn it off. Wow, what a difference. So much headroom we got here. That's just great. Tons of headroom on the return bus, perfect. Out and in. That's just great, just like that. Holy smokes! Basically, when I'm when I'm building a mix, that's what I do is I, I throw on a bus compressor and a limiter just so I can hear what's going on with the mastering chain. That's what I, you call top down mastering, so you can hear exactly what the hell's going on. And in this case, yeah, you can just throw this on and away you go. Now I've also got this amazing Pultec style mastering EQ right next to it. Um, and I can patch those in via the Black Lion. And I'm wondering what would happen if I actually did that. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so we've got the uh, Pultec EQ uh, dropped in place as well. I'm just kind of curious how that's going to work. Now we've got these chained together and that was that simple to hook up. Hopefully I got this right. Let's take a listen. Oh yeah. Let's do like uh, the old Andy Steve thing here, like boost and cut at 30 hertz. How about 20? Maybe not quite so insane. Though. Uh, let's not do any boost and cutting here. Let's just take a listen to that again. Yeah, that's a real powerful EQ. Got to be real careful what we do here. Let's just drop a little bit of top end in. A little bit of zinc. Maybe a little bit of the top here. Wow. We take them both in and out. See, yeah, we've got a boost and cut going on at 20 hertz. Not so much so we can hear what's going on. It's more to create like harmonic distortion in frequencies we can hear. This is something I picked up from Chad Kelly, who picked it up from Andy Sneep. Andy uses it on guitars, and we should probably put that EQ across the guitars right now. So I'm going to go over to a software uh, bus compressor, and I'm going to change my maximizer setting here because I had it set for analog, and I don't want to screw everything up too badly. So here we go. 
Ooh. That does not. Oh, man. I don't know. That's a pretty, that's kind of my favorite software com, uh, bus compressor. And right now, I'm really not digging it. So we'll grab the rear insert, which I already have set up on a couple other channels. We're going to grab it and we're going to throw it in right where the tube tech equalizer would be. And we're going to throw that on our guitars. And, uh, I'm really curious. I'm, I'm just, I'm not even trying the trying the compressor. I just, I, <laughs> I just want to hear it on guitar real quick. Let's see what this does. Good here. Yep. So we're going to go 30 Hertz on both boost and attenuate. Apparently this is something Andy does rather aggressively. Well, that isn't that interesting. Let's try that in the mix. Maybe not that aggressively. Maybe a bit of high end. that all kinds of awesome so yeah that's the rubber bands mastering eq i've done a demo on this before but i've never actually put it on a guitar bus like that and done that crazy uh 30 hertz boost and cut oh wow that's that's really cool actually pretty amazing Not sure what the the uh, the frequency band thing is doing on this. Um, I think I got to uh, figure that out. I don't know which channel that's going on, or if it's all of them. I know there. It's. I think it's supposed to be the top end, but I could be wrong. Let's let's just check one thing real quick here. Yeah, it's definitely the top end. We want to go broad there. Bring that way up high. A little bit of air. Bring the boost in to fill that out a little bit. Wow, that is just that is just super cool. It's supposed to be a compressor demo. We wound up going for the EQ, but I'm getting some ideas here. This is gonna be on my Soldano demo as well, so I'm thinking I might keep some of these analog elements in the freaking mix because this is starting to sound really good that's the trick guys when you're working with analog gear you know i remember going to you know lacquer channel back in the day and phil the engineer would you know sit there and take notes and write down all the settings and whatnot now we've got mr smartphone we can just take a picture of it and remember exactly what the hell it's supposed to be so i'm going to use that on the guitars because oh man is that cool that's that's really wicked. Anyway, okay, enough of that. Um, we're going to shut that off for a minute and then uh, go back to the original guitars. A little, little nasal by comparison. Lots of mids, that's fine. I've got the, uh, yeah, I got the Tube Tech EQ going on and I thought that was great, you know, up until I heard this. Holy shit, what a difference. <laughs> And that that's nothing against Brainworks. Brainworks makes some absolutely amazing plugins. I'm a huge fan. I'm sure if I tweak these out a little more, I could probably get them to sound a little bit more similar. But again, this is another video coming up. I'm going to be doing, you know, the digital mix versus the out-of-the-box mix because the differences aren't subtle. Because you don't necessarily try and set things up to be exactly the same. You just want to, with analog, you just twist the knob until you hear it sounds good and you wind up going in different directions than you would um, via a screen because basically you're interacting with a different interface and that does affect how you hear things because we listen with our eyes, not just our ears. 
You can deny it all you want. It, it's just something that happens. Anyway, let's uh, let's take a listen to this on uh, room mics because I think this would be really cool too. So you know, got the, my favorite uh, one of my favorite compressors, the AIX Intuition compressor on the drum bus there. So let's turn that off, and we're gonna throw this on. The old SSL bus compressor. Now, I don't know if I can smash the living crap out of a, of a, of a drum room like I normally would, but we're going to crank this up to 10 to 1, and we're just going to get try and set it some really aggressive settings and see what we get here. Nice thing is we got a wet-dry control here as well. Make sure I got the right one up here. The right levels. Now we're hitting this one a lot harder. I got this maxed out. Let's go fast release. Now that's looking pretty interesting. And keep in mind, these are switched so uh we've got we can hear you know bring back exact recalls and that's designed for mastering of course but uh in this situation it's working pretty good just on a drum bus like if we put that up against the intuition compressor a little fatter sounding let's hear that in the mix Intuition compressor first. The reinsert. Well, it definitely fattens things up a little bit. That's pretty cool. Let's uh, let's swap that out. I'm gonna turn off the put the intuition compressor back on. Let's hear one more thing on overheads. And uh, this is the thing I love about the S bus S compressor. It's it's, it's freaking stereo, you know? It's like most of my compressors over here, they're all just mono units, and I wish I had more of them. This is great, so I can do stereo sources, like. There we go. How easy was that? Just want to kind of get the snare under control in the overheads. That's with no compression going on. Got lots of headroom over here. I can take the probably. Yeah, this is kind of like, you know, just fast attack, fast release. I just kind of like get the snare drum transient under control. Might be a little much. Gotta hit the threshold pretty hard on this. But if I want spikes, I can blend. That's pretty cool, just like that. I like that a lot, just like that. It's got spikiness, but it's got the compression as well. That is so cool. Now, if I swap this back for softer, let's take a listen. You know, the, uh... Yeah, it just kind of deals with that snare transient just a little bit differently, and it's, it's a cool effect. Of course, I don't have three of these to run, so I kind of got to pick and choose. And of course, where am I going to put this first? I'm going to put this on the mix bus because I think that's where it's most effective because that's what it was designed for. But, you know, if I'm in a tracking situation and I want to, say, like run a real analog stereo compressor on my room mics on the way in, yeah, I'll reach for that. That's super cool. But the added bonus was, wow, I just tried this rubber bands mastering EQ on the guitars, and holy crap, that sounds great. Um, this is the, my track for my Soldano SLO 100 amp up here that's, uh, that I need to demo, and I, I think I might be trying a few things out uh, when it comes to that 
and um, might be using a, a few pieces of analog gear in the final mix because I'm really digging the sound of a lot of this. Anyway, so that is the IGS S-Type bus compressor. I got to say, I'm super impressed. Um, on a mix bus, it's absolutely incredible, but it's pretty good as a drum room mic and even on overheads. I uh, got to say, pretty damn sweet. Again, it, it, it's an absolute winner on, on a mix bus. If you want to fatten up your mix and just get yourself a slightly different sound than you will with software, uh, hey, you can't go wrong with the IGS stuff. Buy it once, it'll last you for life. I've had that sitting in my rack for the last two, three years, and it's just something I switch on. And I never got around to doing a specific video for it because it was always just there. It was just something I used and never really thought about. It. And I'm like, hold on a minute here. I think I really should get a video done on this thing because it's just so damn cool. Anyway, hope you guys found the video useful. I'm going to do another video in the very near future where I shoot out uh, various different types of bus compression and go in a little bit more in depth on why you need bus compressors and, you know, um, especially for mixing that kind of thing. And we're going to take a look at the, the wave stuff. We're going to take a look at the brainwork stuff and we're going to take a look at the IGS and uh, just compare the three and see the differences we get and how that will affect your mix. Because I think that's a conversation that really needs to happen. Anyway, if you found the video useful, make sure you hit the subscribe button because there will be a lot more content coming your way thanks again for watching hope to see you guys on the next video and as always stay safe wash your hands take care of each other and have a wonderful day